ಧ್ಯಾನ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವಿ ಮೇ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಪೇ ವಿ ಲೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅನ್ ಇನರ್ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಶೀ ಪ್ರಿವೇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ಅದರ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋ ವಿ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಡೀಪ್ ರೆವರೆನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಶಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗೈಡ್ ಅಸ್ in this divine journey today's class in one respect is simple in another respect i may not be able to give you a complete understanding of what i am going to present simply because i am also seeking at least in some parts a direct deeper understanding what are we going to touch upon today in the devi khadgamala shloka or stotra in the devi khadgamala right in the very beginning in addition to the 16 phases of the moon the 16 nitya devis that we spoke about who are already in the sri chakra there is also a reference we pay a homage before entering the sri chakra we pay a homage and offer our respects and salutations to the gurus teachers who have handed down the sacred sri chakra worship i am not sure if this is particularly pertaining to the sri khadgamala stotra itself or the sri chakra worship in general i would like to believe the latter that these are the gurus who have propagated who have taught the worship of the sri chakra the secret of the sri chakra the yantra as it exists and this had happened from time immemorial that is why we have gurus who have been classified by some experts as let's go to the slide i think we'll get a better idea so the guru guru vaha means teachers the gurus are classified into three categories there was not just one guru so the first category is the celestial beings who practiced who realized it and taught these are not necessarily three separate processes but in the course of their worshiping the supreme energy they realize the essence the secret of that worship of that path of that ritual and therefore the knowledge was released through them into the universe and devotees absorbed them this kind of knowledge need not be necessarily taught word by mouth by a teacher in a classroom yes we talk of initiation and guru diksha that is one of the traditions one of the traditions not the only tradition a very sacred tradition though but the diksha and the initiations need not necessarily come from a physical teacher it can come in many forms directly from these celestial beings even to this day and therefore we always revere these gurus who are these we'll come to them then the next category of the gurus are the siddhauga guru guru vaha the first one was divyauga divya divya means divine divine celestial synonyms siddhauga siddha to attain siddhi we call it we call them the siddha purushas siddha purushas are perfected beings they are the ones who who have the who who deserve the title who earn the title who are given the title of yogi siddha perfection so siddhauga guru those perfected beings there are a few of them and then there are the human beings and this again are many hundreds and thousands of years ago the human beings who passed on this tradition the earliest known as was recorded 
and therefore some of them are listed. So they are called Manavauga, Manava. Manava means human beings. So there are a few of these gurus as well. Let us see what these three, these three categories were. The reason I put that disclaimer in the beginning is when it comes to the human beings, I'm just going to list them out. I don't know them, I don't know the traditions, I don't know which kula or what what ancestry or how, because all this is so um, lost in, in history perhaps. And that could have been some that were added uh, maybe a few hundred years ago, I don't know. So that part I'm not sure. But nevertheless, let's explore this one by one. Always remember that something you don't understand, let it be. That should not be an excuse to stop your practice. That should not be an excuse not to begin your practice. So you begin with a limited understanding and that can continue across lifetimes. That does not mar your practice. That does not make your practice incomplete. It makes your yearning more deeper. And at some point, for instance, if it's these gurus, they will reveal themselves to you. If it is required, if it is necessary, at the right time. And sometimes without even revealing themselves, they will continue to guide you and bless you in your path. These gurus are energies that are now blessed directly by the Supreme Consciousness. Thus, the Shakta worshippers, the early ones I'm talking about, they attributed these gurus to Devi herself and they said Devi you are the one who you who energize them and therefore I bow to you in them so in the guru they saw the supreme Devi and they bowed so it is with that attitude we enter this the first category celestial beings as teachers Divyoga Guruvaha. Who are they? The first and the foremost, of course, is Parameshwara Parameshwari. The celestial, divine, primordial beings or couple, if you will, Shiva and Shakti, Purusha and Prakriti. It has to have originated from them. Sri Vidya, the supreme education here a practical way to connect to our innermost sanctum sanctorum, to connect to the Supreme Consciousness, this path has to have originated from Parameshwara and Parameshwari. And therefore, as we begin the Khadgamala, we offer our salutations and prostrations to the Supreme Couple. Parameshwara, Parameshwari, we invoke them. Then comes Mitresha Mayi. So Mayi, Mayi is we are attributing Devi in them. Okay. So Mitresha, Mitra Isha, Lord of Mitra. Mitra means the sun. How come? If you know the sun salutations and the mantras are the sun salutations, it begins with Om, Ram, Mitra, Yanamaha. The sun is primarily understood, invoked, meditated upon, contemplated upon as a friend. That is the very first step you take towards Sen. Ah, my friend. Because a friend sustains you. As a friend, he doesn't judge you. He doesn't do it. He's just your friend. He's there for us, no matter what. And therefore, Mitresha means the sun energy. The sun worship and understood this secret and through meditating on the sun we could derive knowledge of the Sri Vidya. As a student of yoga I understand this as the sun, the, the pingala side, the right side of my body. And therefore there is the energy of the sun within me that I invoke and I bow and I say guide me so that I, that I can offer this, this worship and, and take these steps. So Mitre Shamai. Then comes Shashti Shamai. Shashta. 
Shashti means sex. Shashti Shamai. The one who is energized, the one with six faces. The six faces that Devi energizes, that Shiva gave birth to through his third eye, is very popular in the south and that is known as Murugan, Kartikeya, the son of Shiva. There are stories to, uh, to help us understand the power and the nature of this particular energy. A very divine, benevolent, strong, powerful energy. So it is attributed to the son of Shiva, Lord Muruga. But rather than thinking of Lord Muruga somewhere out there, he is in us. And his six heads are the six chakras that connect the Devi at the bottom and the Shiva at the top. And so he is in between Shiva and Parvati. There's a very long secret, secretly held, but no longer a secret anymore. It's called the Somaskanda, where the only way one meditates, that, that tradition on this Murugan is seated, he is seated between Shiva and Parvati. Because Shiva represents the supreme teacher, Dakshina, Murti, Dadi, Purusha, Adi, Yogi and so on. Parvati represents the Adi Shakti, the Supreme Principle, the Sita. And he is the one, Murugan therefore, created by Shiva as a path to connect them both. And so Murugan is the one, or Karthik Bhagwan is the one that connects Shiva and Parvati together. And that Bhagwan, that divine being is in our body. And therefore he holds the, the spear. It's no ordinary spear, it's called the Shakti Veil, the Jnana Veil. And there are many names to that spear, but that spear represents the spinal cord. It is in his hands. So there is that one energy, like the Swamini, we, we understood that concept of Swamini yesterday to some extent, in the last class rather. Swamini as the one who sums up all that energy. So. The sum total of all these six chakras, if one has to cleanse them, one has to pray to them, one has to awaken them and allow them to gradually open, then the Subrahmanya energy comes in. The Kartik Bhagavan. These are different names. I'm just throwing out these names so some of you might relate. Murugan as he's known in the south. Kartik Bhagavan is known, as, is known in the north. Subrahmanya is a Sanskrit word that is popular across. So among the many many names he has but that is the beauty here so these six chakras within us also get energized because they are worshipping Devi because she has given birth she is the mother so they worship and therefore she blesses them and through the opening of these chakras through the harmonizing of the chakras the the, the, the wisdom of Sri Vidya is revealed to us. That is why I said, when you think of initiation and receiving knowledge through Gurus, it does not necessarily have to be word of mouth. This kind of revelation, this kind of knowledge that comes to you, comes at a very, very subtle, but very concrete, very clear directions that there is no room for doubt. There is only... Uh, plenty of room for aha, aha moments. That is the kind of guidance that comes. So, Shashti Shamai. So, we did the right side, sun. We did the center, Shashti Shamai. And now comes Udhi Shamai, Udhisha. Udhi means Udhya, Udhya, Udhyana, uh, Udayam. That which rises, that which flies up. The moon. Uddishamai is understood as the moon here because that which rises up, that which moves and goes through different phases is the mind. And because it's the mind, moon. 
and so mind and moon are connected so here the left side of the body is at rest for our meditations because where are these celestial gurus you might ask the way i have understood them the way i meditate even to this day is the moon is in me the sun is in me this the divine being murugan is in me and therefore when i relate to these energies i relate to them within i talk to them within i engage in them all the bhakti and devotion that wells up in terms of bhajan singing or any time are directed to these energies within uddhi shamai the energy of the moon the mind because you and i are right now using this energy to understand the sun is the self the mind is the one who's trying to understand and therefore the mind that energy is blessed by devi that energy has worshiped devi that means in our own innermost recesses we are all aware of this knowledge but through the grace of these energies they come back to us they are given to us uddhi shamai o devi you who energize that moon as a guru i bow to you we still bow to the devi only but <clears throat> through the moon as the guru then comes charyanathamai charyanathamai charyanath charya charya means practice as i put it out there charya means rituals in this particular context it is more understood as a ritual because when you sit in front of shri chakra or when you hold the shri chakra in dhyanam what you are going to do as you chant the devi khadga mala and enter the avarnas one by one and you go systematically that is a ritual whether you do it mentally whether you do it physically whether you simply visualize it all of that or so you are simply watching it on television it is a ritual so any ritual any abhyasa any repetitive practice is called charya charya so charya natha the energy of that practice understand this our practice has its own energy chakras has their own energy the mind has its own energy the sun has its own energy now your sadhana your practice whatever you are doing that is developing its own energy and that energy the natha the natha of the charya the lord of that practice the energy of that practice begins to reveal to you the secrets of this particular ritual and therefore you bow to that guru as well look how deep and how subtle they have gone in to understand that these energies are gurus when you do practice anything you practice knowledge is revealed and you practice a song on a harmonium again and again and again and again A, a, a song is revealed or, or you learn how to play the piano or the harmonium or or a flute or any of those musical instruments if it's painting you practice 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 knowledge is revealed wisdom comes about where does that energy come from sometimes we separate practice from knowledge we say oh i'm practicing so much nothing is happening when we begin to respect the energy of the practice this is one of the reasons why i always say in my yoga classes we offer that practice and with that offering the practice becomes complete at the very end because we are offering that energy that has generated from that practice is a guru who is who is going to bless you and guide you to the next level you are awakening that guru through your own regular practice so never never ever think that your practice is a waste it becomes ineffective when we do it off and on as and when we please under the disguise of oh god doesn't need this i will i am too busy now he will understand and so on and so forth and we use all this kind of superficial ideas that we think is devotion and we find excuses of not being strict and practicing anything especially spiritual practices as an austere practice 
I'm not even going to food and sleep and all of that. I'm talking about simply the practice. Whatever it is, you're doing it once a week, do it once a week. And let everything revolve around that practice. Then Charya Natha, he will begin to guide you. She will begin to guide you because she works through him, this energy of the practice. For me, I've always had darshan of this energy as a masculine energy. I don't know why. But I've always felt it's a masculine energy. Uh, maybe because I connected to, to Baba. I don't, I'm not sure. But I know, but the energy within that, Charya Natha, is Devi herself. And therefore, we bow to that energy of practice. So when you do your ritual, therefore you do it mindfully because that ritual itself, the act of doing the ritual is actually the Guru. Think of how powerful that is. Because these are celestial. Divyoga. Divyoga Guru Vaha. You, you can't see them. None of these. And it's not necessarily a matter of faith or belief. Not, not, this cannot be realized by blind beliefs or or some kind of doctrines, these energies are realized through practice, through this Sri Chakra worship and therefore we begin to understand and they in turn begin to converse with us. Then there are two and I'll put them together here. These two are human beings, husband and wives. If it were to me, I would have put them in the Siddha Purusha category. Because they are the Siddha, Siddha Yogis, perfected beings. One is Agastya. Agastya is known to many Indians. Um, Agastya is a short, statured Yogi who came from the north to bless and bring prosperity to the south. Now the one that we can relate to as the very first teacher among all beings that we know of, the other four that I just said, the other five are celestial energies, right? But the ones that we can relate to as the earliest ones who taught us, the one that is earliest was Sri Agastya Muni. Agastya Muni. Muni means sage. He had complete control over all the elements and all of that. He had everything that you and I can think of as a fantasy yogi. But he wasn't satisfied, it is said. And he sought for that secret wisdom that would explain anything and everything. And he invoked the mighty energy of Mahavishnu, one of the trinities to guide him. And Mahavishnu reveals to him through an incarnation, through the mouth of a horse, Hayagriva. He explains the whole Sri Vidya worship to him. The way one person explained to me so beautifully was, and this, <laughs> these are all my teachers who never really taught to me word by word. But when he taught this story, two things I asked him. I said, why would Agastya go to Mahavishnu? Why didn't he go to Shiva? Or Brahma? And he said, Brahma has no form. That is why you cannot worship Brahma. There is no temple for Brahma except one or two here and there set up later. But in principle, Shiva is beyond all reaching. He is lost in meditation. Once you go into that dimension, there is, there is nothing. Even you don't exist. The only energy that you can relate to, call upon and talk to, the one that takes avatars and incarnations, is Mahavishnu. And therefore, Agastya approached Mahavishnu. Second thing I wanted to know was if that Hayagriva was the one who gave the secret of the thousand names of Lalita, that is this Devi that we are worshipping, that the Bindu was explained with thousand names by 16, again the 16 Devis. Now 
the story could be linked the 16 devis could be linked to the 16 vowels in sanskrit the 16 phases of the moon and we can go on analyzing this endlessly but it, it was through these 16 energies coming together and presented through the mouth of higher griva the horse the 1000 names of lalita and in that 1000 names lay the entire secret compounded together got together put together stitched together woven together in beautiful poetry it was given Now you and I would think that it would have taken many months for Agastya to learn this, many weeks for him to learn this. I don't know how long it would have taken. But what I have learned to understand was, what was the significance of Hayagriva there? The word ha, hum, hum. When we first began the Hanuman, we understood the meaning of hum. So the secret of the entire Mahavidya was given to Agastya. This is my belief. This is my understanding. Was one Bijakshara that came from hum, but the Bijakshara was cream. That is all Hayagriva said. Cream. It is like the neighing of a horse. I'm not going to try it, I'm not going to mimic it, it might be too funny, but cream, 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 Hayagriva simply said cream, Agastya received the Bijakshara, meditating on that sound, he invoked the 16 Vak Devis, the goddesses of speech, 16 of them. The 16 vowels came alive and brought life into all the other consonants and together they began to form these energies, thousand of them, to explain to Agastya the mystery of Sri Chakra, the mystery of Sri Vidya, the mystery of Shreem and Kleem and Aim and all of the others, Kreem. There are some very old Siddha traditions that believe Hreem was the first, even before Om. But like I said, once I go there, we have no way to prove these things and this can go on in endless discussions. It really doesn't matter. But they are powerful Bijaksharas. Hreem is one such Bijakshara that can reveal to us the secret of this, this worship, this energy, the supreme primordial energy. And so Agastya received it, Agastya initiated and taught that to his wife Lopamudra and Lopamudra in turn spread the glory of Lalita. 300 names, 1000 names, Lalita Trishati, Lalita Sahasranama and so on and so forth. The entire Sri Vidya therefore came from them. And so it is my belief that this couple has been given the place of divine gurus. Because without them, without Agastya, we would have not known about Sri Vidya at all. It was that one seeker who sought in order to bless mankind, he sought, help me find that one thing that can be a blessing for all mankind at all dimensions. How can they... They, they come in terms, come to terms with that source. Teach me. He, he prayed and he did austerity and tapas and Mahavishnu gave him that knowledge through Hayagriva. So that primordial guru of the Sri Vidya worship is given the status of a celestial being. It is believed. And there is a temple in Paini in the south where there is a small shrine for him on your way up. Whenever I am there, and I've been there about two or three times now, I always take time to sit there and meditate. I have a deep, for some reason, a very, very deep connection with the sage. I've always loved the story of the sage. Um, I have, 
I don't know. I've just been attracted uh, from the very first time I've heard of him in my childhood. So, even to this day, it is believed that this energy is Chiranjeevi, like the energy of Hanuman. Now, before I go further, there is one more clarification or one more point I want to share. The six chakras, we go back to Shashti Shamayi. Think of a similarity of this story, the Puranic story of Shiva and Parvati and Murugan or Karthik Bhagavan as the six phases and he joins them together. There is another story of Rama in Ayodhya or Dandakaranika and Sita deep in the south, separated. And Hanuman crosses these oceans and joins them together. So this energy of the chakras, Hanuman guides us to. Kartik guides us to. It is how you deal with these energies. Which energy speaks to you? Because Hanuman also saw Devi. Not necessarily through the path of Sri Chakra, worship. He saw her and he bought and he, 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 he brought them together. In other words, he came to that state of complete oneness, of oneness of Purusha and Prakriti through service, through devotion, through love. But look at his heights of his devotion, not, not part-time devotion, devotions and so on. So understand that these energies are not necessarily demarcated into deities and then into different sects in a religion, different doctrines and they apparently seem not connected. Always when you feel there is division, take a step back. In true spirituality, there is no division. There is only one. They are all connected. They can never be separate. You are not um, angering one God because you are not worshipping him and you're worshipping someone else and all of these weird dramatic ideas we tend to get into are imaginations of our own. You have to dive deep into the meanings of these mantras and then these energies will guide you. The energy of practice, the energy of your own mind, the energy of your chakras as they begin to flower and open, the energy of your sun. As, as, as your idea of yourself begins to expand, because sun is the self, everything revolves around the sun. So the Rama, Atma Rama. So as the idea of one's self begins to expand, the knowledge of Sri Chakra is presented to us. Not how to do puja. The knowledge of Sri Chakra means you begin to see Devi, you begin to experience her, you begin to understand the oneness of creation. And there is no two. There is no he versus she or him versus me. There is just only her acting this out. But that has to come with realization. And that is the wisdom that you and I are seeking. And that is presented through these. So these are, this is Divya Uga Guru, the divine celestial beings to whom we offer salutations as we invoke their names and enter begin to enter the Sri Chakra. Before that, we go to the next one. The next category is Siddhauga Guru Vaha. Siddhauga Guru Vaha. Perfected beings as teachers, yogis as teachers, Siddha Purushas as teachers, Siddhas, if you will, perfected beings, ascended masters as they are known in the West. They are also Siddha Purushas. So, there are four of them that is given here. Kala Tapana Mayi. Kala Tapana. I have always meditated on the meaning of these names because that is the only way I can relate to. Uh, there is not much literature available on these Siddha Purushas. Kala Tapana. That is, this person at attained. The Sri Vidya through sheer austerity. Tapa. Tapa means fire. Tapa means austerity. Tapa means ascetic lifestyle. 
Kala, the one through his austerity, controlled time, overcame time, if you want to understand that way. Kala Tapanamai. So it is an austerity of time itself. And therefore we have to understand Kala Bhairava and as the course of the study. And one has to understand that energy, Kali and Kala Bhairava, because time is of essence as much as spaces. So anyway, so this is a Siddha Purusha who achieved the, the knowledge of Sri Vidya through Kala Tapana. And therefore since the Supreme Consciousness guided him through that austerity, we bow to this Guru who revealed to us through his austerity the wisdom of Sri Chakra. Kala Tapanamai. Then comes Dharma Charya Mai. Dharma Charya would have been another Siddha Purusha, another perfected being many thousands of years ago perhaps, who shared with us the knowledge through right action. Right action, as I always keep saying, is contextual. But when you, in the depths of your consciousness, uh, conscience rather, know that a certain thing is right for you at that moment, at that time, then follow that, act on it. When you strongly, confidently, fearlessly act upon your innermost beliefs, dharma, the best example I can ever think of is Rama. He is going to be coronated the next day and his stepmother says, I want my son coronated, I don't want you to be coronated. The king has, grant me, grant, uh, has, has granted me three wishes, I am going to ask him to fulfill those wishes now. And Rama feels it's its right, his dharma, to obey his father's wish. And because it is that principle that he stuck to, fearlessly obeyed that principle and walked away from the kingdom. And the rest we know, or at least most of us know the story of Rama. But that, that moment always blows my mind. When we at a drop of a hat are willing to change our values, because we say, but how else will the bills be paid or how else can I do this? Oh, no, no, I worked very hard for it. This is my piece of property or this buy this thing. How dare you take it and this and that. But Rama was like, wait a minute, it's just my brother. I'm so happy for you to take over my kingdom. I will go away if that's what is required. Because that's what brothers do and therefore that is what I will do. Dharma Charya. You need to be, that was an incarnation. You need to be a, a Siddha Purusha like this to follow. So, there would have been teachers who followed their dharma so clearly, so fearlessly that Devi revealed herself to them. And so we bow to them because through them also Devi revealed herself. Then comes the other purusha called the Mukta Kesha. Mukta Keshi Shwara, Kesha Ishwara, Mukta Kesha, Mukta Kesha, Mukta means free, loose, free, um, unhinged. Kesha means hair, the locks of hair are freely flowing, they are no longer bound, they are no longer tied into a knot, into a jata, as aesthetics would have. So this was a Siddha Purusha who had his hair free. What does that mean? It just was one of those hairstyles? Well, that's something like, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a sour grape, you're right. <laughs> I can never get that, at least not in this lifetime. But anyway, the true meaning is, whenever there is a reference to locks of hair being tied or being released, Always remember, it is what is in the head. So, here he is talking of complete self-realization from breaking away from all conditions and everything that binds him. Every thought that would bind me, I have liberated myself from that thought. 
Every thought that brings about a sense of judgment, a sense of he versus me, sense of division, I liberate myself from that thought. And therefore Mukteshwara, Mukta Keshishwara is a Siddha Purusha who liberated himself. And therefore, as a symbol of that liberation, he had hair that was freely flowing. A reference to Shiva and Kala Bhairava, when Shiva dances, there is a reference of his hair, his moves and adorns and encircles, golden tufts of his hair encircles the body. Swarna Varna Kesha Pasha Shobitanga Nirmalam. It says Shobitanga Mandalam or Nirmalam. The beauty is it just encircles him. Swarnavarna, golden hair, just encircles his body as he is dancing. In other words, as time moves, there is beauty in that. There is um, feros ferocity in that. But there is liberation in that. We tend to, out of fear, because we are conditioned and we have taught ourselves to be conditioned, out of fear, we often go back into our shell. Say, no, 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 that's too much for me. We will do that later. Someday, I don't know. I don't want all that. I'll, I'm happy where I am. And we falsely stay there. So when we begin to break the conditioned patterns of our thinking, addictions, fears, and whatever it is that binds us, then this energy of Mukta Keshishwara, this energy begins to reveal and Devi reveals the Sri Vidya through this Guru. And therefore let us bow to this Guru. And then the fourth the Siddha Purusha is Deepa Kalanatha Mayi. Deepa Kalanatha. Deepa is simple. Deepa means light. Deepa is light. Kala is art. Deepa Kalanatha, the one who has mastered. The art of light, what does that mean? So when light, which is knowledge, one just not only gets the knowledge, one has the art of taking that knowledge and bringing it into everyday practice, into experience. You need the art, you need the kala. And this is not a normal kala. This comes only with grace. So this kala is deepa kala nathamai. So this the Siddha mastered that infinite knowledge. How can I translate it into an experience that can I can that can be contained? And when he attained that, Sri Vidya was revealed to him. And therefore, we say, Devi, you are the one who has revealed yourself to this Siddha Purusha also. And so we bow to the Devi through the Siddha Purusha. This is how I have been meditating on these energies. And then comes the last one. The Manavauga Guruvaha. Human beings as teachers. Since they have been very clear that these are human beings, I am still not able to find any historical reference. There could be traditional schools, teachers who may know these things. So I am just simply going to list them out. And what I do when I chant this is simply bow to these divine teachers who walk this earth, who have inherited from their teachers. And, and this kind of tradition has been going on for many, 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 many thousands of years. It's not a small little tradition that we are talking about. The Sri Vidya worship, the understanding of the Sri Yantra is, and there are so many paths, so many schools, so many variations. So Vishnu Deva is one teacher, Prabhakara Deva is one teacher, Tejo Deva is one teacher. And they have all realized as it is recorded in this hierarchy, it is recorded that they have reached the heights of Sri Chakra and therefore we bow to the Devi who has revealed herself to them and through them passing it down to us. Okay, Manoja Deva. Kalyan Deva, Vasu Deva, Ratna Deva, and Sri Ramana, Ramananda Deva, or Ramananda Mai, Sri Ramananda 
ರತ್ನ ದೇವ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ದೇವ ಮನೋಜ ದೇವ ತೇಜೋ ದೇವ ಪ್ರಭಾಕರ ದೇವ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದೇವ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಏಟ್ ಗುರುಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಸೆವೆನ್ ದಿವ್ಯ ಗುರುಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ನನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರೈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಲರ್ನ್ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ವಿಲ್ ನೋ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ದೀಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ದಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೇರೆ ಲೈಕ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ರೈಟ್ now it's up to you to take up and say all right the first 10 of this long list of names what do they mean where do they what what have i understood and so on so the first seven are the celestial teachers the next four are the siddha the perfected ones and now comes the eight the human teachers who have passed down this tradition my dear sisters and brothers is a very sacred tradition very profound tradition very deep tradition but the beauty is it was not and it cannot be locked into just one particular way of doing it we will talk about it more hopefully in the class tomorrow where um we talk about as you enter the shri chakra how do you go around clockwise or counter clockwise we have always been going clockwise except the last triangle and the last 16 nitya devatas we'll come to that so i'll explain to you how i have how this knowledge was revealed to me and how i have practiced it know that when you sit in front of the shri chakra you might have read many books you might have read many teachers you might you might have attended many satsangs like these or workshops or whatever you want to call them camps all of that is fine but when you sit in front of your sri chakra in your altar know that you are going home to your home that path to your home you have to carve that path you have to discover that path you have to experience that path so you learn and you understand and you listen you contemplate from many teachers many books many sources then you sit and say where do i connect to what do i connect to at this moment you feel that connection take that one step then the next step will open up and step by step step by step one step at a time things will begin to reveal itself to you that is the grace of this divine energy have no doubt about this and therefore let us bring tonight's satsang to an end once again with that beautiful meditative chant let us offer that to the devi and leave the satsang with her in our mind in our hearts and in our consciousness the one that is inspired parameshwara parameshwari and the sun mitreshamai the six chakras sashtishamai the moon uddishamai charyanathamai all these divine celestial beings let us bow to her meditate upon her and open our hearts to receive her grace ಅರುಣಿಮಸ್ 
Hara Hara Mahadev 